so i hope everyone can see my screen so in the last class we were discussing about uh, poisson regulation zones and we'll just have a quick look at what we have uh, gone through in the first module so the our first module um, have almost ended and we have finished with the first module and uh, we'll just see what all things we have uh, seen in the first module so we just talked about uh, civil engineering and the various disciplines of uh, civil engineering and how and uh, so we are specific the different branches in civil engineering and then uh, uh, we just discussed about the section criteria for a site where we want we are possible to construct a building and uh, then we move forward to the types of buildings where it was uh, classified on the basis of occupancy per uh, resistance height of building mode for low transfer type of material used for construction etc and then uh, after that uh, there was a uh, different other classification what we have gone through especially uh, based on the ndc national building code uh, and uh, with there were different types uh, starting from group a to group j and uh, i'll just go through it quickly and the based on height there was another classification based on lot transfer there was another classification so these are all the classifications that we have gone through so uh, you need to understand that this is actually a rcc frame structure and this is actually load bearing structure here uh, on this classification uh, it is divided as a frame structure and the load bearing structure the frame structure the uh, main components that carries the loads are the beams and columns while in load bearing structures the load is being transferred to the foundation by walls so you need to understand that uh, most of our houses that we have constructed a, a few years ago uh, mainly they were uh, load bearing structures and nowadays so what happens is like even though uh, for a small residential building people have started to use frame structures and uh, but it is like you know, obviously it will be much costlier but uh, uh, on the other hand frame structures are much safer against lateral loads that means against wind or uh, against Uh, earthquake so uh, that's the reason why many people are adopting uh, rc frame structure and even uh, decades ago we uh, for high rise buildings we had been using uh, uh, rcc frame structure so this is the main uh, classification and uh, the, there was next classification based on the material used for uh, construction and then we discussed about the components of a residential building where it is divided as substructure plinth or basement as superstructure we had all gone through all these things and you can uh, uh, have a look on this in the google classroom i have uh, posted the same material in a google classroom and you can have a look at that and uh, we uh, studied in detail about foundation plinth and floor so there were some other figures that i have included later so this is actually the plinth you can see the bottom part it's known as plinth and the below that it's foundation and above it's superstructure so, so this is superstructure and this is plinth and below that is foundation and then uh, there were the parts of the building where we have uh, i think uh, we want to understand the definitions and all the location of all these parts uh, so there are several examples of uh, this type of buildings and then we started with the building rules and regulations where uh, first we discussed about national building code and uh, how it was formulated how the a brief history of formulating this code and there were uh, the categories and classifications based on national building code how they are being uh, classified and how they are being specified on the basis of a national building code and then uh, what happened is like uh, we then we then uh, uh, discussed about the building rules in kerala mainly it was like kerala building uh, municipal building rules uh, so uh, we studied how it started in 1964 as kerala building rules and uh, how the revisions and amendments came in the coming years so in 2011 it was divided as a kerala municipal building uh, rules and kerala panchayat building rules so for panchayats we will be um, looking uh, in this for a building constructed in panchayat we will be referring the kerala panchayat building rules and for municipal buildings we will be referring kerala municipal building rules 
So and there was some amendments in 2019. This is actually a brief history. You just uh, need to know all these things. And uh, we discussed about the chapters in Kerala Municipal Rules 2019 and how these chapters are being divided and uh, what all definitions are being included in each chapter. So uh, all, the, all those things, we uh, had a look on all those things. And now uh, there were some other terminologies that we have discussed in the last class, mainly were the permit, site, setback, line, open space. So we hope everyone have understood that this is actually an important area where uh, uh, you need to find out the open space, uh, which is actually required while we construct a building. Open space means it's actually set back distance from uh, the boundary of the plot. So what should be the set back distance on each side? So there were some um, uh, tables regarding that. I hope everyone have understood all these things and everyone have gone through all these things. Even though it won't be asked as a problem, it might be um, asked something like this, maybe what should be the setback distance for a building of 60 meter height? So you can expect such kind of questions. So, so you, it's always better to properly understand and thoroughly go through this uh, table. So it's not that difficult as we have seen in uh, analysis on or other designs. It's just a basic thing. So I don't think you'll face any difficulty in understanding uh, the setback distance that need to be followed on all the sides of a building. And then uh, we discussed uh, about a permissible coverage and floor area ratio. And uh, as we have seen earlier in the terminologies, we have discussed about coverage area and uh, floor area ratio. So these are the categories of uh, buildings that have uh, been mentioned in the first column. And uh, in the next column, just uh, divided as maximum permissible coverage allowed and the maximum permissible floor area ratio. So um, uh, we have explained and we have discussed about these two terminologies in detail in the previous class so if you have any doubt regarding the same you may contact me on the same so after that what uh, we just move on move on to the coastal regression zones and because in short is known as crz norms and uh, uh, we discussed about there are different uh, crc regulations one two three four it's named like that so where are all these included and all those things and uh, for a proper understanding we have also included a figure for the proper understanding in this there you will understand where are all these uh, cost of regulations on one two three are located uh, so the, this is actually a proper figure which will explain us so uh, the thing which we'll have to look through is like for 2018 so that's the latest one so whatever the rules and regulations are there we'll have to look at the latest amendment so 2018, there was an amendment. Uh, so this is the thing which we have to look. So uh, with that, uh, we just concluded the first module. And uh, our first module is over. So now uh, you'll just move on to our second module. So in the second module, uh, it will be a little more uh, different than what we have uh, dealt in the first module. So uh, shall we start with the second module? So in the second module, what happened is like, uh, they will uh, see what are the contents in the second module. So the contents are survey. Uh, so we have discussed about what's meant by surveying. So it's a separate branch in civil engineering and where we will have to evaluate the area of a land or the length or uh, any other dimension. So the scientific method, the scientific uh, strategy is used to evaluate the dimensions of a plot is known as surveying. So there are different types of surveying and all those things and we'll discuss in detail while we move on to this module. And the second thing we have to discuss is about construction materials. So what are the different construction materials used? And uh, what are the cement, concrete and steel? And next, uh, the last part of the module, we'll discuss about the modern construction materials. So what are they? Uh, there are different um, construction materials and how they are, uh, we are using them in different situations. So shall we start with our second module? So uh, Siddharth, is Siddharth here? Siddharth?
സിദ്ധാർത്ഥ് കേശവാണോ So, serving is actually an art of determining the relative position of points on or above or beneath, on or above or beneath the surface of the earth. It might be on, there's actually a comma here. Positions on or above or beneath the surface of the earth by indirect, direct to indirect measurements of distances, directions and elevations. That means we are actually determining the relative position of the points that might be either on the surface of the uh, earth or it might be above the surface of the earth or might be beneath the surface of the earth so the what we do is like so what we do is like uh we'll use some measurements and directions and some other elevations to determine the relative position of points so we'll take a, a standard point as our reference and then we will find out how our uh, point is located where our lo- point is located relative to a reference point so this is actually the basic idea of surveying so it's an act of uh, art of determining the uh, relative position of points on a, on above or beneath the surface of the earth so we'll just see there are two types of uh, things we need to understand there is a difference between surveying and leveling so let's see uh, what's the difference between surveying and leveling so these two uh, headings you need to separately consider so first we'll talk about survey so surveying is a process of locating points in a horizontal plane so it's actually uh, basically it's a measurement of distances but when we see what's meant by leveling so leveling is actually the process of determining the relative height of the points on the surface of the earth in a vertical plane with respect to horizontal so surveying as actually uh, we will be taking measurements in the horizontal plane understood but in leveling we will be taking measurements in the vertical plane so if you want to if you want to um, find out the height of a building we will be using leveling so we are taking a vertical distance so process of determining the relative heights of the points on the surface of the earth in a vertical plane with respect to horizontal so we'll consider a horizontal line and then what we will do is like if you want to con- uh, find out the height of a building we will take the vertical distance that process is known as leveling but when we see what is meant by surveying surveying is actually the process of locating points in a horizontal plane understand suppose if you want to measure the length of a road that is actually done in a horizontal plane which is on the surface of the earth or uh, we want to uh, find out the area of a plot so that's how that's also come under that's also come under uh, survey and uh, i hope you have understood the basic difference between surveying and leveling so is chantana here yes sir so yeah uh, could you please explain uh, the difference between surveying and leveling in your own words uh surveying is basically um for uh, the measurement of plot or um, in order to um the it basically comes with the plot uh and the measurements of like you know uh, uh, the plot and leveling uh, uh process of which, which plane we are considering for both these things as a main thing uh, which points What we are the? considering and which planes we are considering for surveying and leveling so what i i, I which you... plane plane Uh, have you heard about this uh, x y plane x z plane yeah the horizontal plane yeah explain so, so for surveying we will be taking the horizontal plane and for leveling we will be taking the vertical plane yeah yeah so that's the basic uh, difference between surveying you need to understand that if you want to find out the height of a building you'll be using the term used is known as leveling and while uh, if you want to 
find out the length of her rod or the area of a plot or something else which is on the horizontal plane we'll be using the term survey so and then we will see what's the importance of survey so why we need to do surveying like first of all to prepare a map or plan of areas to show positions of objects on surface of the earth you might wonder how our maps are being prepared so even uh, before uh, the advent of satellites satellite images there were conventional methods that have been in use to uh, draw the maps even if on the medieval age you might have seen the seen very old maps of uh, any parts of the world so it was even prepared even uh, like centuries ago so there was there are several methods uh, that have been in use for many years which is actually um, conventional methods each area or each um, maybe uh, defined as a continent or each place will have a different methodology to find uh, to draw the map of a particular area so uh, they what they used to do is like they will take several number of points they will take a reference point with uh, first of all and then they will uh, take several number of points on the boundaries of their uh, plot or their country and they will find out the distance and they will uh, draw uh, with this uh, distance they will draw the lines so it's a, it was actually a himalayan task in the early ages to draw the map of a building of map of a plot or a country there were uh, several other countries uh, before uh, centuries you know so uh, uh, even from that time we have been using uh, the methods or the techniques in surveying to draw the maps so this uh, first objective is to prepare a map or plan of areas to show positions of objects on surface of the earth and second is to lay out the alignments of different engineering features such as buildings roads railways dams reservoirs canal tunnel airport bridges etc so uh, not only to prepare the plan area we need to find out the alignments also when if it's a road we need to find out how the road is been aligned or if it's a railway line how it has been aligned so all these questions have can be answered using the help of survey so this is actually the first step of any engineering project whenever we start any engineering project the first thing we need to do is like we need to do a proper survey so this is the first step whatever the project may be first of all we will have to understand the boundaries where the it is to be located all those things so all these answers will be um you can get all uh, you can get answers for all these questions using survey so this is the main objective of survey and next we come uh, uh, to the preparation of archaeological geological and military maps so in detail what we have discussed earlier so uh, in each it will be subdivided these three points will be subdivided into different uh, subdivisions so uh, the first thing is like preparation of archaeological geological and military maps so archaeological map is used when we want to find out a very old uh, medieval age kind of civilization so all those things so you might know what is meant by archaeology department and they were they were actually focusing on uh, things which are uh, decades ago that have existed especially uh, uh, even though you need to understand that this in the style civilization which has been buried for uh, for like hundreds of years they have been excavated in the beginning of 1900s they have been excavated using the archaeological uh, survey things and all they have understood that there existed a civilization which was much advanced than we think they were supposed to be at that time so even though even they had uh, all these amenities that we are using now not on the base of technological amenities but uh, even uh, when we think, think about sanitation most of the households had a, a flushed toilet with flushing facilities 
even they had a bath they had a proper drainage system they were properly maintained so we have understood a lot from all things that have existed uh, years ago so that's the importance to find out the archaeological maps and the geological maps is basically as a geographical map and military maps is like uh, boundaries where we can place our um, troops where we can deploy our our uh, our uh, machineries all those things so uh, in order to prepare all these maps whatever it may be an archaeological map this is not archaeological map is not actually the present era map it might be an earlier era map and geological map is actually the present era map this is actually the civilian map which we every citizen or every human being uh, can use a geological map for uh, for its well being and uh, military maps are actually used only uh, for uh, the purpose of security and all other things so there is a difference between all these maps you need to understand that archaeological map is not actually the map of an area as per the current scenario and geological will give us a proper data on the of the current scenario and in military maps it just gives an idea about the things uh, related to uh, military uh, deployment uh, boundary security etc so the next step is the establishment of boundaries of properties with reference to the available records so we will have to establish the boundaries of properties so there are uh, different records available so we need to establish the boundaries of properties with reference to the available records so measurement of quantities in cutting and embankment using contours so uh, you need to understand that uh, we need to measure the quantities you might have noticed while we are constructing a road if it is an and if it is an uneven surface there are uh, chances that we need to cut some part of the earth and there are uh, in some places we need to fill so why we do uh, a surveying is like we need a uniform road of the uni of uniform height so we need to construct a road with uniform height so in order to achieve that in some cases we will have to cut the earth surface and then fill uh, the ditches or there so there will be a difference between the elevation of all these points so if we want to make that straight or uniform uh, we will have to do all this cutting and embankment so cutting is actually meant by uh, the um, meant by cutting is actually we will cut the earth from that particular place and embankment is what we do is like we will fill the uh, fill the uh, ditches or actually the uh, the points which are below the required height so uh, this term is known as cutting and embankment and we will first find out the contours contours is actually a term which is used in in uh, civil engineering for you know surveying that means it's actually a line so uh, you might have seen in google maps if you take a take uh, the satellite there's actually satellite images available in google maps and there are uh, traffic is available in google maps next thing is like terrain so if you look at the if you take uh, the google map and uh, look at the terrain you can see some uh, lines that are being uh, marked on the map so you need to understand that the height of all the points in that line will be same so actually contour is actually the line that gives the uh you same elevation on all the points so uh, if you were difficult in understanding then uh, let me uh, show you uh, with my google map so just wait for a second uh, let me stop presenting it and then i'll show you in google map what is meant by contours so hope everyone can see my screen now so uh, i just uh, stop my presentation just to take google maps in my
so let me show you uh, the google maps so this is actually uh, the thing i can see on my screen so if you look at this actually the terrain uh, or the traffic map so if you take this map this is actually the traffic map or that is being shown that will show the roads and other things and if you take the terrain or the what you can see this will show you how you might be knowing all these things but i don't know whether you have uh, seen the terrain map so that, this is actually the satellite map this is actually the satellite image that is being used for the map and the next thing that you will see is like you take the terrain so if you look closely you can see a number of lines that is being drawn so can you see this uh, lines that is being marked as 200 meters closely spaced lines are there can you see that can anyone respond uh, can you see these lines so i will be uh, pointing along this line can yes, you see sir. that okay so this is known as contour lines that means uh, and it is marked as 100 meter that means at all the points along this line the elevation with respect to the sea level is 100 meters and you can uh, there are uh, several other lines at every 20 meter intervals and next dark line is at 200 meters understood so this is actually the contour line so uh, there is a separate study on all these contour lines that means uh, there are some properties for these contour lines that you need to understand that no contour lines will cross each other understood why because each contour line will be having a different elevation so this is 100 meter elevation that i am pointing to the dark line and if you see here in the next line it will be 120 meter so if these two contour lines we meet at some point that means our map is wrong so contour lines will never map uh, we will never uh, cross at each other they will always cross something like this at some point they will, it will be a close thing. you can see here on the uh, right side you might see so to point out here so this is actually the main thing purpose of using contour lines so here you can see the 200 meter line and there is like after that it moves to 400 meters so uh, in between there are five number of lines like one five number of lines so each line will represent uh, if this is 400 this is 200 or 300 like this so and then uh, there will be 400 to 600 you can see how many number of lines are there so each line will have a different elevation and all the points this placed in this line will have the same elevation above sea level so are they able to uh, follow what i am saying can anyone respond abhinav putrathan abhinav yes sir Uh, are you able to follow what i am saying about contour yes, lines sir. yes okay so uh, some other properties of contour lines are uh, like uh, see in this case you can see uh, here it is closely spaced these lines are closely spaced that means there is actually a steep slope in this. so from the height of 600 meters it reaches 400 meters in a very small uh, span that that means this is uh, all these lines are closely spaced and there is a steep slope and while uh, then we if we look at some other place you can see there is actually a, uh, the distance between these two contour lines are much higher that means this is actually a uh, it is not that steep as we have uh, seen here it is actually a plain area and uh, uh, the steepness has reduced so and if we move towards any sea coast you can see uh, you might not even see any contour lines see also that means it is actually uh, there is uh, very the elevation of all these points is very less so as we move towards the uh, mountain the elevation of points increases and hence the uh, spacing of all these contour lines will increase so 
we can understand with the spacing of contour lines how steep a mountain is suppose here see it is very steep 600 to 500 meters it uh, reaches in a very short span so these mountains are, will be very steep and uh, while we look at a plain area there won't be uh, any contour lines shown even though they are shown but there's actually a significant distance between these contour lines that means these areas are very uh, less steep than what we have seen on the other side so this is actually the purpose of uh, contour lines so uh, i was trying to explain uh, all those things so you, you might understand what is meant by all those things so we'll use these contours uh, for uh, finding uh, finding out whether an area is to be cut out or we need to fill that area and if the filling is on us impacting or impactment of the data so that that's actually the third objective of uh, surveying and the fourth objective is supporting of profiles for finding the capacity of the reservoir or canal so uh, uh, similarly if you want to find out the capacity of a reservoir or canal next thing we can do is like um, uh, using survey we will uh, find out even though you can use this contours also so we will find the total area of that uh, reservoir uh, reservoir means um, uh, the, the area where water has been stored uh, and we will find out the depth and then we will measure a depth at different points it won't be same at all points so we'll find out the depth at different points and we will uh, take uh, the total volume of the reservoir so uh, that's another objective of serving uh, or even if it's a canal we can do the same and measurement of distances between two points, determination of relative positions of points, layout of alignment of engineering structures and applications in GIS. So measurement of distances between two points, I explained it earlier. Uh, if you want to uh, measure the distance between two points in a road or uh, if you want to find out the alignment of engineering structures, uh, how are they are being aligned, for example, a railway line or a or a, uh, or a bridge, etc. How they are being aligned, and uh, and this is like geographic information system GIS. This is actually a term used uh, to find out the information about the geographic features in a on the on the surface of the Earth. So this is actually uh, using uh, done using uh, different satellites where information is being done to satellites. So you can understand that. A small application of GIS also comes in Google Maps uh, that I've explained earlier. So this gives an information about uh, the geographical features. So we'll understand where all uh, these things are located, all those things. So the, these are the objectives of survey, uh, starting from the preparation of archaeological, geological, and military maps to GIS. So there are different applications, so whatever the project may be, whether it's uh, uh, any kind of civil engineering project, the first step is to do a survey of the particular area where we intend to go forward with the project so this is the objective of surveying and then what we will uh, we will study uh, the principles of surveying so uh, you might have uh, uh, studied the principle of surveying in your uh, surveying class or basic civil uh, laboratory class have you studied about the principles Can anyone uh, respond? Others can. So, do you know what are the principles yes, of surveying? So, I'll, uh, if not, I, uh, if you haven't heard about that in your uh, survey lab, then I'll just explain what's and by um, what are the principles of survey. There are actually two principles. So uh, the first one is to work from wall to path, and the next is to locate a new station by at least two measurements from either maybe linear or angular from a pixel reference point. So the first principle is something like to work from wall to path. So just imagine that you are measuring a road, measuring the length of a road. Understand? So let it be a straight road of 100 meters. So you have started to measure the length of the road. And what happened is like uh, you have decided 
to measure it using the help of a snake scale of uh, five meters. So you started from point zero. You have uh, taken a scale, and you started to measure. How many times do you need to measure it? Like twenty times, since the uh, length of the scale is five meters. So what happens is like if you do like that, any error that has been happened. It may, any error, even though it's like a millimeter error that has been happened while taking the measurements, will accumulate when you reach hundred meters. Understood? Have you understood what I am saying? Is Abirami here? Abirami KP? Yes, sir. Could you? Uh, have you understood? Uh, what I am saying? Yeah, sir. Okay. So, if there is any error that has been happening uh, while we are taking measurements like that, it will get accum accumulated at the end. At the same time, what we do is like we'll first uh, th that process is known as working from part to wall. That means we are dividing it into several parts, and we'll receive wall area after that. But on the other hand, if we uh, work from wall to part. That means if we start from zero and hundred, and we will take the measurement from zero to hundred, and then we will divide it, and we will come to interior areas, and that is known as working from wall to path. In that case, the errors won't get accumulated. Understood? So, so when we work from a path to wall, and when we take small small measurements and reach the end, there will be a huge uh, accumulation of errors. While on the other hand, if we take the endpoints first and then we come towards the interior, the uh, errors will get uh, balanced. So this is process is not working from wall to part. So always while doing the survey, first thing is what we do is like we'll work from wall to part. We'll take the wall area and then we'll subdivide it into small parts. So that's actually you want in the uh, first point as uh, the wall area is divided into triangles. So triangles are the uh, so if we are measuring the case we are measuring a area, we'll divide all this into small triangles. Don't consider this uh, measuring length anymore. In this case, we are measuring area. So the wall area is divided into different triangles, and then these triangles will be divided into smaller triangles. Why it is done is like we will have to control localizing localizing minor errors. So if uh, that's a square plot, suppose if it's a square plot, first thing we'll do is like we'll divide that square plot into two triangles, and then each two triangle, and we'll subdivide it into another two triangle. Similarly, uh, it will go uh, until we reach the uh, smallest triangle. So uh, the errors will get minimized and localized. It won't get accumulated. So, in other on on the other hand, if you are going to measure that square area uh, by taking small small measurements on the sides or, uh, or small small measurement of the sides, any error that has been happened while taking the survey will get accumulated there. So, this can be avoided if you are working from bolt to part. So, this is the basic idea of survey. So, whatever it may be, uh, the first thing is like we will have to uh, start from the bolt area. And then we will divide it into small parts. So this is actually given by this uh, third point to control the localized and minor errors. Uh, so on the other hand, if you work from part to wall, that means if you start from small small points, uh, several other points or uh, like other sides, you start measuring the sides of that of that of that square that I have explained earlier. All these minor errors that has been happening will get. Uncontrollable at the end. So, um, uh, is there any doubt regarding uh, working from wall to part? The first principle of survey. Can I ask um, Arsha Anil? Arsha Anil? Yes, sir. Have you understood? Yes. What is the first principle? Could you please explain it to your friends? Mm, the whole area is divided when into a triangle, then further it is divided into uh, sub smaller triangles, so the error will be minimized. Uh, in your own words, could you please give an example and uh, explain it? 
if we take a road a small area we road is not a measured in area road is actually measured in length so explain it with an area that will be better if we take an area of a, a ground or something some yeah okay so how can it be done we can divide it into a smaller triangles yeah then how oh, how oh, uh, small triangles means first step is to divide it into how many triangles depending upon the uh, uh, shape of that area if it's actually a proper square then we can divide it into two triangles if it is of then, some other shape then we will have to uh, we will have to join one corner with the other corner understood and we will get an and uh, we won't get a properly shaped triangle and do you know the formula to find out the um, area of an irregular triangle half do you know area of a triangle half base no no if uh, that's only applicable for a right angle triangle there is no, uh, which is not as really that like it's not uh, always we will get a right angle triangle while doing a survey most cases and in, may, in the 99 percentage cases we'll get an irregular shaped triangle that means all the sides will be different and all the angles will also be different so how to uh, measure the area of a triangle whose sides are different any idea Yeah. I think you have studied it in your uh, 10th standard or uh, 12th standard. I, do you remember a formula uh, root root 3 uh, s minus a into s minus b into s minus c? Yes sir. Do you remember now where s is actually the um, average of all the sides that means a plus b plus c where a and b a b and c are the length of the sides of the triangle? Yes. Do you remember? Yes. Sir. Okay. So that's a uh, area, uh, that's a uh, equation which is used to find out to find out the area of a regular triangle. So suppose you have a plot that may not be necessarily a square plot. In ninety-nine percent of the cases, it won't be a square plot. It can be of any shape. so what we do is like we will connect the corners opposite corners using lines and then we will divide it into different triangles and then we'll take and then we will further divide it into different triangles so first thing is like uh, at least we need to divide it into two triangles to find out the area of a plot most cases it might be a plot of four sides we we'll divide it into two triangles and we'll find out the area of triangle area of these two triangles and we will add and uh, uh, in the other case what we do is like uh for further rectification of errors or moving any errors then we will subdivide all these triangles these two triangles into further small smaller triangles so this is actually the basic uh, principle of uh, working from wall to part uh, where we basic uh, dimension or the basic shape are be used for finding out the area actually triangle and we whatever the plot may be whether it may be square rectangle or uneven shape uh, plot we will divide it into several triangles and then we will find out the area of each triangle so uh see the first principle that we have been discussing and in the next principle uh is to locate a new station by at least two measurements it might be a linear measurement or an angular measurement from a fixed reference point suppose if you see the figure so uh, we have we know uh, the location of two points a and b and then we need to find out the location of c so, so in this principle we say that we want to find out the location of uh, point c we will have to use two points at least two measurements that might can be either linear two linear uh, one linear and one angular or two angular so in the first case we will see the first figure shows like it will be taking two different measurements from a and b so we look at a point 
and then we will find out the difference uh, find out the distance from b and also from a that's d1 and d2 so this is the first method we can locate a point c so uh, if we take the measurement from any one uh, point that we earlier know like either a or, a or b so that's not the correct process we need to take at least two measurements and in the second case we'll be finding out a, a point which is orthogonal to the point c understood on the line a b and then we will take the dimension here also we have we are getting two measurements that's actually an angle 90 degree angle and another d2 understood another d2 is actually distance from this point to c and in the third figure we will see we are getting an angle from uh, point b and another distance from point uh, b it's known as d1 here also we are taking two measurements we have one angular and one linear measurements and in the fourth figure we are taking two angular measurements from A and B. So we will um, draw two uh, lines at, at angles theta 1 and theta 2 from A and B respectively, and then we will find out the point where these two lines will intersect. Here also we are taking two, uh, two measurements, both are angular. In the other case, we are taking a, a, a linear measurement from A and an angular measurement from B as theta and D. So this is uh, in this case also we are taking two two measurements. So this is the second principle where if you want to locate a point, we will have to take at least two measurements. That can be uh, two measurements. That can be either uh, two linear measurements or two angular measurements or one linear or one angular measurement from any of those points. So this is actually the basic principle of uh, the second principle of survey. So. Uh, the first principle is to work from wall to part rather than working from part to wall. We'll work from wall to part. And the second principle is we you know to locate a new point, we'll have to take at least two measurements. That's either linear or angular measurements. Whatever uh, measurements we take, there should be at least two measurements. So I hope everyone have understood uh, these two principles. Is there any doubt or uh, can I call anyone and ask them to explain? Is Thomas Piers here? Thomas Piers? Yes, sir. So, uh, Thomas, could you please explain these two principles of surveying? Work from whole to part means uh, divide the area into small, small triangles and calculate the area. Uh, see, uh, here we have given this area and triangles as an example for uh, in the case we are measuring an, measuring an area. So, uh, you should not write like this. Understand? Uh, you should, what you need to do is like write something like this. So if you start if you start from part to wall, at the end there will be a lot of uh, uh, errors that has been uh, that will be that will get accumulated. So in order to avoid that, we'll start from the ends, whether it may be a linear measurement, whether it may be an aerial measurement. Understood? Yes. So here we are giving an example for area measure, area we are measuring an area where we, that area is divided into several triangles. So this can also be done uh, in an, a linear measurement, like we are measuring a roadway or a railway uh, length. We can uh, divide that whole length into several parts. Uh, first, we will take uh, the uh, distance between the two ends, and then we will take different points in between. Uh, like suppose if it is like 100 meters long, we'll uh, first locate the zeroth location, and then Next point will be our 100 meter. Uh, it will located at 100 meters. And the third point might be at 50 meters. And then we will divide that into two parts, like 0 to 50 and 50 to 100. And then we'll take a third, uh, the, the fourth point at 25 meters and fifth point at 75 meters. And then each uh, of the thing will be divided into two, two, two parts, six, in the case of a linear measurement. In the case of an area measurement, we'll divide it into triangles. So, uh, Thomas, have you understood uh, the working from wall to part principle? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. And what's the next principle? Uh, it is to locating a point with respect to another two, uh, two points. Okay. So, what we need to do? By linear or angular method. Okay. So, uh, at least two measurements, we have to take at least two measurements. Understood? Yes, sir. 
so uh, suppose if you want to locate a point uh, from the wall of a building understood from wall of a building um, like the bound maybe the a tree how at what distance the tree is in located from the wall of a building you have to take two measurements from the wall of the building first thing is like maybe the uh, starting of the wall will be at a and n will be at b and then we will take two measurements d1 and d2 or we will find out the point which is exactly orthogonal to the, our point or three which is circuit and c something like that so um thomas i hope you have understood yes sir by this second principle also okay sir is it yes sir so uh, uh we take the attendance and we'll conclude today's class